Hey guys, this is Lala Legacy, and welcome back to another episode of Symphonic Rain. So, let's jump right back in. The final reverberations of the foretell were absorbed into the walls, and a void-like silence returned to the room. I could hear the girl's elevated respiration clearly, as though she were breathing right into my ear. I didn't normally praise myself for my performances, but I felt today was... Uh, was as appropriate of an occasion as any. Whew. Fal let out a large breath, then smiled sweetly. There came no words of praise, nor of dissatisfaction. There were no, or they were no longer necessary. <clears throat> we both knew everything there was to know about our own performances. It's roughly one month from now, huh? Yeah, looks like we had plenty of time in the end. Well, we shouldn't overestimate ourselves. Nor should we put ourselves down. We should evaluate ourselves appropriately. Good point. My elevation subsided with time. <clears throat> and with it came the realization that my fingers and shoulders felt sluggish. When completely focused on a performance, I would lose all sense of time and neglect my accumulating exhaustion. Are you tired? A little. Oh, just a little. Then let's do this routine again tomorrow. Wait, every day? Hmm, we'll have to discuss the schedule later, but, well, I'd at least like to relax during Natale. Fal decided with a meaningful smile. It looked like Natale at least was safe. I'm a little relieved to hear that. <laughs> To, or, however, tomorrow we shall practice rigid, uh, rigidly. Yes, yes, as you wish, ma'am. Jeez. Shall we wrap things up here? Let's organize tomorrow's plans. Fal suggested after we arrived at the Three Forked Road where we always parted. Shall we meet up around noon? At school? I think it would be better if we started a little earlier. A little earlier? That would mean in the morning. How about ten? Just think of it as part of the academic routine. I don't like thinking of a holiday as a regular day of school. How about your room, then? That might make it all the more difficult for me to break free from holiday mode. Oh, jeez. Then, how does this sound? You can think of it as visiting a friend's house. A friend? You mean Asino? Hello? She's right in front of you. Your friend, who's even gone as far as becoming your partner. Ah, right. So that's what you meant. I'm glad you understand. But practice, huh? What's more? What's more? Going over to a girl's room is... Embarrassing? Kinda. Are you really that sensitive? Well, I'm just not used to it. I answered sheepishly, and as expected, Fel had to laugh. If anything, my room was the better option as Forney was there. Not that I needed someone to keep an eye on us, but if we got too deeply involved with matters that extended beyond music, the result would be painful for both of us. Okay, in that case, I'll throw in a bonus. You won't be able to refuse. A bonus? If you come early, I will include two meals. What do you say? You're cooking, huh? That's tempting, all right. It was gradually getting harder to refuse. <clears throat> Perhaps I should have agreed to practice in my room from the start. But it was too late to suggest either school or my room by now. Hmm. Then do you want to start at noon after all? Uh, no. Sorry, but... There is something I haven't told you yet. From the day after Natalie until the day or day before school starts next year, I won't be available for practice. Um, <laughs> I really should have mentioned this sooner. The day before the start of school, the 3rd of January? Yes, I wanted to wait on revealing this news until we had been settled as partners. I see. Then it's also partly my fault for being so slow to make up my mind. Don't worry about it. I'll be out of commission for a little over a week. I can return on the 2nd, so we could resume practice from the 3rd onward. I don't mind. 
<clears throat> we'll probably be rehearsing nonstop when school starts again, so it'll be a nice break. Mind telling me where you're off to? I was thinking of going home for the holidays. Ah, I see. But knowing you, I figure you'll be rehearsing even at home. Of course, and you should be as well. Don't worry, I won't be slacking off. Thanks. Anyway, about tomorrow. We'll meet up in the morning, right? Thank you. Don't mention it. Then, can you meet me at 10? In front of Corper, or Coper for, uh, for convenience? It was too late to argue over the location. Sure, but are you sure you're okay with hosting me? Of course. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay then, see you. I watched her disappear from sight, then walked home, pondering whether or not to bring Forney along tomorrow. Don't do it! <laughs> and so we ended up deciding to rehearse at Fowl's place tomorrow. Care to join us? I was almost positive she would say yes, even if I didn't explicitly tell her I wanted her to come, but... You're going there to rehearse, right? I would only get in your way, so I'll pass. What? I wouldn't be able to sing anyway. Besides, you're short on time, right? You're being an awfully good girl today. Don't treat me like a child. You mean you aren't? Uh, do you care if I force you to tag along then? Like I said, I'll pass. Are you sure? How often must I repeat myself? How odd. In return... W what? I'll practice with you after Natalie plentifully. That was your true objective? Pretty much. I thought I'd oblige. Fine. Then I'll be going alone tomorrow. Okay. Do your best, okay? I will. Well, it wasn't really her style. It seemed she was being considerate of me. I thought I'd adapt her, or er, not adapt, accept her gesture for the occasion. The 24th of December. It was crowded in town, likely due to the fact tomorrow would be Natalie. <clears throat> tomorrow, most people would go to church and, uh, and most stores would be closed. Religious people usually spent tonight until after tomorrow's mass in silence. I wasn't particularly religious, and while I would still attend church to pray tomorrow, I didn't feel like spending the eve in silence to prepare for my prayers. I avoided the eyes of the citizens on the streets and checked the time through the window of the trattoria, um, as I had done the last time. Looks like I'm a little early. I noticed the sound of the rain hitting the awning and absently noted that I'd forgotten all about the rain being there for a moment. I'd heard there was a function in your body that would drive monotone sounds into the unconsciousness if they continued on for long enough. It made it reasonable uh, that people of this town had gotten to be so indifferent toward the rain. I was likely in the process of becoming apathetic to it as well, having or after having lived here for years. I strained my ears and held out a hand to feel the raindrops on my skin. The fine particles of the drizzle uh, changed direction by the slightest gusts of wind as they soaked the palm of my hand. I would get a cold if I held my hand out for too long like this, so I withdrew it for now. Chris, what are you doing? Uh, Fal. Good morning. Good morning, you're early. Really? I think I'm just barely on time. I thought you might be helping out in the store again like last time. Nah, not this time. So, what are, or what were you doing? I just wanted to feel the rain on my hands for a bit. What's the point? When it's raining endlessly like or when it's raining endlessly like this, you tend to forget about it sometimes. I really don't think so. This isn't your town of origin either, right? Come to think of it, I don't think we've ever really talked about that. I suppose we haven't. Anyway, my house is pretty close, so let's talk there. Aw, her room is kind of cute. 
<laughs> Sorry for intruding. Make yourself at home. Fel handed me a dry towel at the entrance. You used a towel, or whoops, you used a towel before, right? Thanks. After drying my hair, I buried my face in the towel, taking in its pleasant odor. When you're done, just place it somewhere around there. After wiping my foretell case clean of raindrops, I folded up the towel and left it on the table. Fel was busy in the kitchen, outside of my field of vision. Taking a good look around the room, it didn't really seem much like a girl's bedroom. This wasn't to say, <clears throat> or that wasn't to say, that I expected it to be particularly feminine, but perhaps I had that impression simply because there were, or there was so little stuff here. Not that I was one to talk, as my own room was pretty much the same. What's wrong? Uh, nothing. You're probably shocked at the, or at my lack of possessions. A bit. I think I have all I need, though. I'm comfortable with it. I see. Anyway, whoops, anyway, we still have some time until noon. Shall we practice? Right away? I only have one objective right now. Practice. Right. We should drive out all unrelated matters. Such sentiments were super... super... Flows? I never know how to pronounce that word. <laughs> uh, where should I set my foretell? Or set up my foretell? Over there is fine. Then, let's begin. Okay. Oh, gosh. Oh, okay. I don't actually have to do it. Yay! Whew. After taking a deep breath, Fal took a cup of water from the table and downed it in one go. And that's about all for today. Yeah. After eating sandwiches at noon, we devoted the remaining time until dinner to rehearsing, without ever taking a proper break. Considerable fatigue built up in my body, and there were times during our performance where my fingers stopped moving properly. The temperature inside the room was mild, but my clothes were soaked in sweat by now. Now that we're done, I'll have to cook some food. I don't mind having some leftover bread. Hey, are you saying I've been having a stew simmer since this morning for naught? Since this morning? The meat itself isn't that great, but if you boil it plentifully, it gets really delicious. Aren't you tired? I'm doing it because I like to. With that, the girl left for the kitchen. She must have been tired, yet her pace was energetic. There was no way I could follow her example right now. I like to, or I'm doing it because I like to. I wondered how many times I had heard her say that by now. Was there even anything she disliked? She worked a part-time job beside her student life, saying she doesn't mind because she enjoys the cooking and would always cons uh, consent when someone asked her a favor. She enjoyed copying scores for me, she enjoyed making food right now, and she enjoyed singing. What didn't she enjoy, really? Sorry for the wait. I think it's pretty well done. Thanks for make or thanks for making it. Uh, what the heck was I doing? The more I learned about her, the more miserable I began to feel, and I began to feel other things. To put it in a good way, interest. To put it in a bad way, affection. I wasn't supposed to be doing anything besides practice, yet here I was, engaged in unrelated activities. What are the plans for tomorrow? I wouldn't mind going to church to pray, but... Was I looking forward to tomorrow? More importantly, there's this place I'd like to visit. I just nodded like an idiot, brought more food to my mouth, and told her to handle the schedule. Oh, by the way, I have two tickets for the concert. I would like to go there as well. To not let myself get swept away by emotions. To not corrupt the relationship we had going. I feigned indifference and pretended to be delighted. But in truth, I was delighted. Ooh, he's having an inner war! <laughs> Shall we meet here tomorrow? Sure. Is noon okay for you? Since it's Natalie, definitely. 
Also, I'd like to arrive at the concert hall by three o'clock. Sure, what kind of concert is it? Alumni of the Institute come together uh, to perform every year on Natalie. You didn't know? I think I've heard about it. Tickets come cheap for students, right? Unfortunately, unlike normal concerts, students don't get any discounts. Even though students should be the ones most interested in attending, since there are so few seats, tickets are barely sold through the regular channels. Oops. Apparently, most seats are distributed with priority among acquaintances of the orchestra members and big shots of the Institute. Then how do we get tickets? Uh, didn't I just say that I or that acquaintances of orchestra members get priority? She casually produced two tickets from her bag. Do you have such acquaintances? I'm on personal terms with plenty of instructors. I... I see. It's times like these that make me feel glad I helped them out in the past. Quite calculative of you. W what an awful thing to say! <laughs> the instruction or the instructors probably didn't give her tickets simply for having done a few favors for them. After spending some time with Val, anyone would realize that you just can't help but feel to want to help this girl out. Val loved to sing and was always striving to improve, but or she put in the effort and had the talent to pull it off. Then it's okay if I don't bring my foretell, or right? Are you planning on going a full day without practice? Listening to good music counts as practice. Or, or so I thought. But then I figured some actual practice might be needed after all. Yes. Exactly. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, don't forget to come in your uniform. My uniform? Why? It's a concert by Institute alumni. Some formal attire would be appropriate since we are students. Our uniforms. Good point. Got it. See you tomorrow. Unlike this morning, the streets were deserted by now. I figured everyone had finished shopping and gone home to prepare for their prayers with their families. When I got home, I was in the mood to make a prayer as well. Twenty fifth of December. Morning had almost passed when I woke up. I ended up being awakened by Forney's angry voice as she peered over my face. Didn't you have an appointment at noon? Morning. Don't say that. Then what do you want me to say? Just shut up. <laughs> I didn't really have time to fool around with Forney. I energetically jumped out of bed in an attempt to shake off my drowsiness and went to take a shower. 30 minutes until the appointed time. I had nothing else to prepare besides my foretell, so I could easily still make it. The faces of the people on the streets had a distinctive or distinctively different feel to them from usual. There were people who had already made their prayers and those who were on their way to do so. Unlike the regular Sunday masses, the mass at Nat er, at Natalie were held continuously throughout the day, so that as many people as possible could attend. There also wasn't much of a ceremony. The priest wouldn't read out scriptures, nor would bread and wine be distributed. However, hymns could be heard flowing from the church the entire day. And while it was a rather troublesome procedure, it was possible to line up to receive blessings from the priest. The church itself was open to all, and it was possible to head right in and pray, but it was common practice to first line up in the queue, which would at times extend all the way outside to receive blessings. The pre or in the previous two years, I used to line up there together with Arietta. As I was waiting for Fowl in front of the Trattoria, I heard a familiar voice call out to me. Chris! Ah, Torta, good morning. What are you up to here, in your uniform no less? Waiting for someone? Fos er, Fosita? Yeah, we're going to a concert later, so we decided to go in uniform to look a bit more formal. I see. What about you? 
I was about to go to church. You're going to, right? I'm planning to. You're planning to, huh? In that case, we might run into each other there, huh? Perhaps. See you then. Not that I'm in a rush or anything. I, I just wouldn't want to intrude on you two. She said and casually waved. Torta. If we don't meet at the church, we won't have any opportunities to see each other soon. So until next year? Yeah. See ya! See ya. But that is all the time that I have for this episode, guys. So if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe. By subscribing, you're becoming part of a legacy. I love you guys so, so much. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!